We're all familiar with the three what's, what it is, what it can do for me, and what does it cost. Tyler Rickenaut Country Financial can help you find the answers with insurance coverage to help protect what's most important to you, all at a price you can afford. So while you're juggling work and kids while trying to keep an eye on your financial future, Tyler Rickenaw Country Financial will make sure they are the first ones there when you need them most. The kids are back to school and your schedule is busier than ever. From daycare pickup, doctor's appointments, sports and college tuition, a parent's signature is a powerful thing. Have you ever stopped to think? What would happen if you weren't able to provide one? With thoughtful estate planning, you can make sure that your child's health and education needs are met in the event of your absence due to a temporary incapacity or even death. The estate planning team at Hurley Burrish is here to help. Fostering deeper relationships, influencing behavior change, developing resilience. You're about to start winning. Here is your host, Christine Bright. Welcome to Parenting Game. I am so glad you are here. Today, my guest is Adam Sutton, who is a single father of two children, who's been single parenting for over 14 years, and he also has had primary placement. Adam, Thank you so much for being my guest and sharing your story today. So first, let's just give our, our viewers a little bit of an overview. Um, 14 years, so how old were your kiddos? So at the ages of four and two, I was thrust into the experience of being a single father, nothing I ever planned or expected. And now my kids are 18 and almost 16 years old. So it's been a long journey as a single father. Yeah, and you really advocated for your kids, so much so you got primary placement, which is not heard of, especially for dads, very yeah. much. Yeah. It's hard to find people to connect with that have been through that experience. Um, even family members ask me to expect the worst to prepare, that things don't usually work out for single fathers. And I just focused on a very positive mindset and said, you know, I'm going to put my kids first and make them be my North Star, and things worked out, so. That is great, and you have been doing an amazing job. There's been a lot of challenges along the way, and as we talked, you just shared, you know, your experiences and how that now has grown into wanting to, to advocate for single dads. Um, as we talked, you know, you learned that, you know, initially you were like, I don't know where your stance is, but then you learned that I am really loving being a female voice for single dads, that they're needed, they're wanted, um, don't like the minimization that is happening at the expense of elevating women. And I could just feel this sigh of relief in you after I, I shared that mm -hmm. and we had an amazing conversation and that's when I said you need to come and share you know your story and what your passion is and we talked a lot about a lot of stuff um, can't get into it all today but we're we're gonna do our best but before we dig in got a little fun thing for you to try are you a candle guy I've been known to dabble. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a great shop here in Sun Prairie called the Budding Butterfly. And they, I, was, I was just in there and talking about candles and scents, and I had this great idea for us to kind of do a little challenge of like smelling some of their amazing candles and seeing if we can figure out what's in it. Great. So this is our first one. It's called Energy. And I like that one. Ooh, I like that one. Okay, so now, so now we gotta put our hats right. on. So there's specific scents in there. It's made with essential oils and soy, tree and, and plants, all natural type stuff. I think I'm getting basil, maybe. Okay. Any, any, anything coming to mind uh, there, for you? There's definitely some type of mint or spearmint. Okay, I, let's, let's it see what's in there. It is jasmine orange, looks like sandalwood, and yang. But sandalwood is in the mint family. 
It yeah. is. So good job. <laughs> I was off base. I was saying basil, and there's like no basil in this thing. Oh, it smells but good. It smells amazing. Yeah. It's like filling up the whole whole thing. So, okay, you did admit that you do dabble in the candle thing. So when is when is your opportune time to, to light a candle and enjoy? Um, I'm not going to share all those experiences, <laughs> but, you know, I, I think just to, to get uh, a fresh scent in the room, I like sort of that tobacco, leathery, okay. you know, more masculine type candle scent. Just I cannot do vanilla. I cannot do anything sweet. I'm more of the like cinnamon type or the real clean scents, like clean linen. Um, my friends know I have gone to their house and said, you're going to have to put that candle away. It's too floral. It's too yeah. sweet. And it, it will. It will try to trigger a headache for me, yeah. even though it makes me sound a little hoity-toity. But <laughs> it's totally the truth on that. Um, but anyway, th yeah, these are great. If you're just looking to, to power down and stuff, you can stop in there and, and pick something out. Okay, so let's dig in to your journey a little bit. Okay. Share with me, there, there was a point when you realized you're going to have to change some things. You're, you got thrust into this single dad mode, um, figuring it out, right? We all need that grace when we get thrust into that new situation. But you did have a moment where you realized I'm going to have to change some things. I'm going to have to do something different. And you shared that it was after that first failed relationship. Yeah. So give us a little background on that. Yeah. So I think, uh, especially for fathers, um, sometimes fathers are known as the, the fun guy or the, 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 the easier parent initially with a, a broken marriage and a broken family. Um, and I found myself doing things, you know, like, movie parties, candy, you know, maybe over spoiling the kids to really make up for the fact that they couldn't be with both parents at the same mm -hmm. time. I think you're constantly trying to find ways to help them overcome just the emotional challenges that they deal with as, as kids from, from broken families. And then the other thing that's commonly done is searching out a new relationship to replace the old relationship. Mm -hmm. and unless you're in the right mindset. And you know, that's a, a lot of, the, you know, the work I've done over the years is really getting a, a more solid mindset, doing a lot of inner work. You're not ready for that relationship. And so that relationship becomes more of a Band-Aid and, and a distraction. And it can really take away from the children being your priority in life. And I think I've always been a good single dad, but I don't think anybody just wants to be good. I think everybody wants to be great. They want to give their kids the best. Mm -hmm. They want their kids to grow up to be great, productive people in society. And so I went through a pretty challenging breakup and it really made me look more inward and focus on um, you know, how I was approaching parenting and how was I was approaching my relationship with my children. And I think things really changed from that moment and they continue to change as we go through each <laughs> um, experience and age group and yeah it's it's been a wild ride and that you know props to you you know be proud of yourself on that because with what I do with family and parent coaching there's a lot of and I'm gonna say men and women who don't take that pause you know to to, to figure out those pieces of themselves like who do I really want to be moving forward what was my piece ultimately in the marriage that caused it the end or the relationship and you you know it's that big shift of well this is how I parented with somebody it's not going to work the same so mm -hmm. what does it look like for me to parent you know by myself and I just had a question pop in my head we didn't really discuss this but I feel it's important was there a moment to where you realized I can't do it all and it is okay for me to get help and ask others to come and help me with my parenting. Yeah, I think it's that moment where you feel like you're burning the candle at both ends and you're feeling that sense of burnout and you feel like you're not the employee that you want to be, you're not the friend that you want to be, and you're not the parent that you want to be. Mm -hmm. Everything suffers when you really don't have that balance in your life. Um, so I'd say that's sort of the period where I had to look within and say, you know what, I, I, need, I need help, I, mm -hmm. need, I need support. And it was everything from getting help with cleaning services to getting 
more help to take breaks, to get out with friends and, and, and not feeling the guilt over getting babysitters and things like that. Yeah. Um, I think that's a, a challenge, especially for single moms, but for single dads who don't always have as much placement, um, there is that, that pressure to be everything and, and, and everything to your, your children and to really be there in every waking moment. And sometimes if you have more placement, you don't have those breaks. Mm -hmm. You don't have that balance of time with friendship or even solitude, you know, t taking time for yourself and self-care is a huge lesson that I've learned the hard way, <laughs> not, not doing it the right way. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah that's... And some of what I've seen is when I don't have the kids, there's this pressure to get tons of stuff done so I, I don't have to do it when the kids are here. And then when the kids are, you know, with the dad, then they're just fully concentrating on every second, every moment with their kids. And they don't make that time because they're, they're operating out of that guilt, you know, and out of that shame. So I have seen what you explained. And I'm so glad that you are here and that you're you know, advocating for dads and, and are building some things to help support dads, which we will get into in a little bit. Um, but when, when you really started focusing on you and, and it started clicking, when we were talking, you shared three areas. You said diet suffers. Uh, you um, dislike learning on the fly. So that's the stressor of figuring out how it all goes feel isolated and then the guilt starts kicking in it's four things four things that you mentioned that's part of this wellness you have some stats you have some great information about this as you started digging into it so share with us what you learned about the effects of single dad on the dad yeah so when i started my journey trying to learn more about what's out there for for single fathers there really wasn't a lot a lot for single parents but nothing that truly uh, locked in and met the fathers where they're at and mm -hmm. really helping them understand that there's a safe place for you here. There's, there's resources. I couldn't find really anything. Um, and so that got my mind going. And so I'm in uh, the medical field and medical sales. And so I'm very good at researching things, looking at clinical studies, boring stuff for the <laughs> average person. But it, it comes easy to me. And I found a study from 2018 that looked at single fathers compared to fathers that were um, co-inhabiting with a partner or even single mothers. And I was shocked to find out that the mortality rate for single fathers was three times higher than that of both single mothers and even fathers that lived with a family in a household. And I was shocked and I, I thought, why isn't anybody doing anything? This is an epidemic. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what the author said, that we need to take a closer look at this. We need to do more for this group because it's only getting worse with COVID and, and the divorce rate seeming to go higher and higher. And, and I thought, what, what can I do? And there were, as you said, three key areas, uh, things to explain why is the mortality rate so high in this group? Mm -hmm. um, the first one was diet. Um, guys aren't as good in the kitchen <laughs> possibly, for, for many of them. I know some dads that, that are good cooks. Um, so they tend to eat out more. Um, they don't have somebody cooking for them and helping them or helping them learn the things in the kitchen that, that might be healthy. And a lot of it, I think, is just feeling overwhelmed. And when we're overwhelmed, we tend to gravitate towards convenience. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing is binge drinking. And I think there's a couple facets to why that is. One is they're overwhelmed. Um, they don't have an outlet to really unload their feelings and emotions. Men, in, in our culture, at least in the U.S., we don't talk about our feelings as much. We go golfing. Uh, we go to the bar and have some beers, mm -hmm. shoot some pool, <laughs> um, do everything we can to not address how we're feeling on the inside. And a lot, of, a lot of friends don't understand if they don't have kids, if they're in a happy marriage, they can't relate to the pain and isolation that single dads go through. Um, so that's another huge issue is the binge drinking and you know sort of the numbing of the pain. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is loneliness, um, isolation. Um, and I found this true in my life. It's awkward to invite the single father into the household. If you're a couple, 
that having that third wheel as another male, there, could, there can be sort of feelings of intimidation or awkwardness when that happens. Um, and that was one of the major things that the, the study identified was that single dads are not incorporated into society the same way as other parents or even other single mothers who have different types of friendships and different cultural norms in terms of how they connect with other women. Mm -hmm. And so those three things um, got, got the wheels turning and made me think, if there's nothing out there, why don't we create something um, to help these single fathers, um, to help them have a safe place to you know, unload their feelings and, and not feel isolated, mm -hmm. to understand there's a lot of single dads and unfortunately, it's just getting worse. Yeah, so share with me a little bit too about some of the guilt points that you had as a single father, when when would that guilt kick in? Yeah, you know, early on, I remember the exchanges and the children crying of being taken away from their mother, and there's this heartbreak that you can't you can't put into words. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody that goes or has gone through divorce understands that there's a lot of pain and and and, and healing that needs to be done with that. But when you're dealing with your children's pain on top of yours sometimes it's too much. And what I learned through the process was that you can't take that pain away. I don't think it ever completely subsides for your children, but you can do things to help heal that. Um, you know, we don't have time to get into all those things today, but you know. We're gonna get into yeah. some of okay. them, but okay. yeah, yeah. We'll make some time to get yeah. into some of that. Cause that was such a powerful point when we were talking. And I wanted to make sure to, to touch on that piece because you know, we as parents, out of the just the goodness of our hearts, we want to to make our children feel better. And then, oftentimes, what we end up doing is teaching them to stifle their emotions, or like, don't feel that way, you know. But I do, you know. And what I'm really excited about about what you're going to be bringing to single dads is being for one for dads to be able to talk about those emotions and that they're all okay and then that's going to trickle down into them being able to do that with their kids mm -hmm. when those emotions come and they're okay and and I can handle that you're sharing those emotions with me um, so you talked about we also talked about the mental health piece you know with dads and also, you know, that de detriment to kids. As much as we, you know, don't like to look at it, we don't like to admit it, it's the trauma, and it does. Mm -hmm. Speak into that a little bit about the mental health piece. Yeah. Single dad first, and then a little bit of what you've seen with the kiddos. Yeah, so uh, obviously the, the, the key to any solution starts with yourself. You can't help others if you can't help yourself. And I've seen that in, with so many single fathers. Uh, I've been very, very blessed to have a lot of single dads come into my life that are, are just starting that road and trying to help guide them on uh, a straighter path and mm -hmm. to not make the same mistakes that, that I made. Um, and that's, that's a huge challenge uh, to, to come across. Um, it, it, it's heartbreaking when you hear the stories of single dads that are dealing with that pain and that, and that anguish and you know, trying to let them know it's, it's going to get better, things get better, but you gotta start with yourself. You, you can't help your kids till you get centered and grounded. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that happens with things like therapy, you know, just making sure you're talking to people. Not everybody's blessed to have a friend that can sit down and handle <laughs> the emotional oh, yeah. gravity of these types of topics. You know, it makes people sometimes feel uncomfortable. So getting a good therapist and making sure that you're, um, you know, unloading these emotions and, and also just understanding that it's okay to feel overwhelmed. It's okay to have these feelings, but you can't stay stuck there, right? You, you gotta take care of yourself and push through that, not just for your own sake, but for your kids. Um, I think just a healthy, um, healthy lifestyle. You know, we saw one of the three <laughs> pillars was not, two of them had to do with your lifestyle in terms of not eating well, and, and binge drinking, using unhealthy coping strategies. Mm -hmm. So I think really either getting a, a, a health coach, uh, getting a, a, a trainer, that's one of the things I did when I first went through my, my divorce was getting a trainer to get myself in a healthy place. And I, I think a lot of people that work out or, or are active regularly would agree that 90% of that is not about your physical looks, it's, it's about your, your mental, uh, mindset. Mm -hmm. It's just, I call it therapy when I go in. <laughs> I 
I to agree. The health club. Yeah, I go. It's amazing how fast I run when I'm mad. When something has ticked me off and I go to the gym and today I'm going to get on the treadmill and run. It's like, yeah. wow, that was really fast. <laughs> and then I feel great yeah. after. What did you, um, you know, what did you implement first? And did, did you implement things right out of the divorce? Or did it take you a little bit to be, become aware I need to incorporate yeah. some of these different aspects? It took time. Um, a lot of times we get a little bit of momentum and then we fall back into our old habits. Um, and I think things like journaling or writing down your goals, um, having an accountability partner, especially when it comes to working out, it's hard to mm -hmm. get out of bed early and, yeah. and initiate that struggle. And especially for dads that have young kids in the house and maybe don't have that freedom of being able to go to the gym that has daycare or ha has a uh, a backup plan or a support system in place. That's another thing that, that can hold back from that. Um, you know, I started to, and I'm not good at this, of, you know, getting massages, you know, just mm -hmm. taking care of my body, um, going on healthier eating plans and just being more organized and thoughtful in terms of how I planned out my week and what I put into my body. Getting out of those um, habits of meeting your buddies at the bar for a drink mm -hmm. during the night instead of you know having them over and doing healthier activities um, all those things it, it just takes time and everybody's ready when they realize that this way isn't working you mm -hmm. know I've, i have to try a different way yeah was it a challenge for you to change that mindset of i need to take care of myself first and it will ultimately make me a better dad or was it, was it an easy one for you? It was probably the hardest part of the process. Um, I'm one of those weird guys that when I was in high school, I knew I wanted to be a dad. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know of a lot of people that say that's one of my life goals is to be a dad. So it was in my DNA that I wanted to be mm -hmm. a dad. And you know, as I went through marriage and the, and the marriage ended, I felt like I need to be that much better of a father to help my kids through this process. So everything becomes about sacrifice, um, including your happiness, where you're not doing things for yourself, you're doing things for the kids. And I, I think there's, there's a twofold uh, deterious effect that that has. One is your health and your, your mental wellness suffers. Mm -hmm. You're not doing anything for yourself anymore. It's all about giving. And I think this, this goes both ways yeah. with even single mothers that feel like it's gotta be about the kids. They need me. They need every moment yep. of my time. But I think it, it's also it has a negative effect on the kids because they become the center of the world and the world revolves around them. And that's not a healthy thing for them either. Mm -hmm. They need to see that their parent is taking care of themselves, that they're doing positive, healthy things, that it's okay to take care of your mental health and your physical health and to take care of the household. Those are all things that are essential in order to make a family work at an efficient level. So And I love that you you bring that piece up. We, you know, again, it comes out of goodness and the guilt is is kicking in and and you you believe you're doing the right thing. And oftentimes it's not till too late where some people realize all this goodness I thought I was doing about making my kids the focus has now caused me to raise kids who are entitled. Yep. And now we're seeing some adverse effects from that. Very, I appreciate you bringing that out. And also, sh you know, showing and saying, hey, I put these things in place and it didn't have a negative effect on my kids. My kids didn't feel like they're lacking. If anything, it, it made me better and able to stay in some of those fights that, <laughs> that yeah. you need to stay in along the way. Which that's the other thing, you know, there's so much that comes along. If you don't take the time to get yourself mentally healthy, I mean, you're, you're just gonna go down, down, down. Whereas if you're mentally healthy and, and those hard times come, you're, you're in a much better position to handle those a lot better. So, so glad that you're talking yeah. about that. Um, we, we're getting to the end of our time. I knew this would go quick. You had three statements that you made when we were talking on the phone that I want to make sure that we touch on because each one of them was so powerful. And you said this line, keep your kids the North Star. Just briefly share what that looked like for you when you were keeping your kids the North Star. Yeah. 
I think that started um, right during the separation and the, the marriage was coming to an end. And I had no idea what my life was going to look like, um, where I was going to live, where the children were going to live. And I don't think there's anything worse during that process than the uncertainty. You know, just this anxiety builds and grows within you. And I made a commitment to put the children first with every decision I made. And I, I said, you know what? I have faith that things will work out if I do that. And a year later, I remember being on a phone call with a judge <laughs> and finding out that I, would, I was going to get primary placement of my children. I mean, one of the most exhilarating days of my whole life. Yeah, yeah, and with that, keeping your kids the Northern Star, you soon realized part of that is if I'm healthy, then that's good for my kids too, so. It's, yeah. This is one of those things I know you're passionate yeah. about, and I'm excited for you to really start, you know, sharing with single dads, and we'll get into a little bit more on how you're going to do that. Um, give yourself grace. That was pretty simple, but that took you time yeah. to get to that point where you could give yourself grace and not being able to do everything. So important. And the last one is, and I love this, um, you, can't, you can't be perfect enough to make the pain go away, but you can help heal the pain. Mm -hmm. When did that light bulb go off for you? Even though I, I know that in my heart, it's, it's a daily struggle. There's a voice in your head that says, you can do more, you can be more. And especially when you're hearing outside voices, right? Uh -huh. um, there's outside <laughs> yeah. voices of people from your past that mm -hmm. you're no longer married to that maybe are telling you something. And I think as your kids, pain manifests, they say things that start to make mm -hmm. you doubt yourself. And again, getting back to taking care of yourself, that's why you need to stay centered and calm. You can't meet the kids where they're at when they're elevated. Yeah. It's, it's one of the worst things you can do. It, it, for one, it teaches them that it's okay to lose your cool uh -huh. and to not emotionally regulate. And, and number two, it's, it's, it's not good for you. Um, it's making you more anxious. It's making you lose control. Mm -hmm. And we don't make the best decisions when we're not regulated. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's a lot of things you can do to help with that. But. Yeah, and you end up undermining yourself, yeah. your authority as a parent. I, I tell them all the time, you know, this, the yelling is actually you're undermining yourself. If you can get the point across calm, now you're influencing. And I know you have really worked hard on that and are a great dad. You are just really growing this business to be a single dad advocate. And I would like you to share your website. So what is the address for your website? So it's evolvewithac.com. Okay. And you are, you're, you got a lot of stuff going into place, support group, um, individual coaching, so they can, and you're just open to, hey, email me if you're looking support, and I can help you get connected to support. So I know we will be seeing a lot of dads connect to you. Thank you so much for your time and being vulnerable enough to share your story. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Christine. Thank you for tuning into The Parenting Game, and I am wishing you a great day. We're all familiar with the three what's, what it is, what it can do for me, and what does it cost. Tyler Rickenaut Country Financial can help you find the answers with insurance coverage to help protect what's most important to you, all at a price you can afford. So while you're juggling work and kids while trying to keep an eye on your financial future, Tyler Rickenaw Country Financial will make sure they are the first ones there when you need them most. The kids are back to school and your schedule is busier than ever. From daycare pickup, doctor's appointments, sports and college tuition, a parent's signature is a powerful thing. Have you ever stopped to think? What would happen if you weren't able to provide one? With thoughtful estate planning, you can make sure that your child's health and education needs are met in the event of your absence due to a temporary incapacity or even death. The estate planning team at Hurley Burrish is here to help. Thank you for watching The Parenting Game. All episodes of The Parenting Game are available on demand at sunprairiemediacenter.com.